Hi, this is Ron Jacober. For those of us who were in attendance at the arena on May 12, 1986, Game 6 of the Campbell Conference Championship Series, or the Stanley Cup semifinal if you prefer, will live on in our memories as one of the truly magic moments in St. Louis sports history. And that's the purpose of this recording, to help you relive and fondly remember the game they call the Monday Night Miracle. The Calgary Flames had upset the Stanley Cup champion Edmonton Oilers in the Smythe Division Final, and the Blues had beaten Toronto in the Norris Division Final Series to reach the Campbell Conference Final. After an opening game win in Calgary, the Blues lost the next two games, one in Calgary and one in St. Louis. Coach Jacques Demers Blues then took game four, five, two at the arena to square things at two games apiece. Game five at Calgary was a 4-2 Flames victory, a game which the Blues players felt they should have won. So St. Louis faced elimination as the series shifted to the arena for game six. The first period of the game was scoreless, but penalty filled as referee Kerry Frazier was kept busy handing out 70 minutes worth of time in the penalty box. And as period two got underway, the Blues found themselves at a two-man disadvantage because of a last-second goal mile scramble in the first period in which they picked up the short end of the penalty situation. Calgary wasted little time capitalizing on the power play. KXOK's Dan Kelly has the play-by-play. Puts on the brakes. Trying to feed Joe Mullen. Center to shot. They score! Danny Quinn on a perfect goal mouth pass from Mullen. And Quinn, with a two-man Calgary advantage, scores the game's first goal. Still a man short after the initial goal, the Blues' Lee Norwood picked up a two-minute minor for roughing, once again giving a two-man advantage to the Flames. Just seven seconds later, the potent Calgary power play would click again. Here's Reinhardt, trying to feed it through. Natras missed it. Wamsley out of the net to clear it. Natras gets it, held in by Reinhardt. Reinhardt centered to Quinn, he scores! Danny Quinn into the top corner. His second of this game, it's 2-0 Calgary. And so it was 2-0 early in the second period, and the arena crowd of 17,801 was beginning to get ideas that the Blues' season was about to end. But a ray of hope appeared when young Cliff Ronning, who had played for the Canadian national team most of the season, picked up his first goal in the National Hockey League. Ronning poking it in, now Hunter had difficulty with a bouncing puck, McCowan cleared it, Ramage held it in to Hunter. Hunter and McCowan do battle. Comes to Ronning, dropping one back for Ramage. Ramage behind the net to Ronning, out in front, he shoots, he scores! Cliff Ronning, the rookie! That goal came at 5.58 of the second period. The Flames, however, would regain their two-goal advantage with this effort at 9.19 of the middle period. Face off, won by Federko, he couldn't clear it, the Flames get it, they score! Paplinski on a backhander! Federko had won the face off, but couldn't move it. And Paplinski was there to pounce on it. And Calgary again has a two-goal lead. Lee Norwood was sent off for slashing at 14:41, And the Flames took only a few seconds to respond on the power play again. Here's Quinn on a face-off. Getting it to McDonald. But Tinelli scores! John Tinelli! After just three seconds of the power play, it is 4-1 for the Calgary Flames. The period would end with the score 4-1 Calgary and there was very little reason for optimism among the gathering as they looked up to the scoreboard to find that the Flames had outshot the Blues by a 26-12 to margin over the first two periods of play. Many fans certainly were hanging around to show appreciation to their heroes in blue after the game for a season to remember and to watch the teams in the traditional Stanley Cup post-game handshaking ceremony at the end of the series. But as the third period began, one could sense a new drive and determination in the play of the Blues. They seem to be driven to show up well for the home crowd, no matter what the game's final outcome. St. Louis had little to show for its spunk until, with a two-man advantage, the power play finally clicked. Into the side for Pazlowski. Back to Gilmore. To Natras. Side of the net to Federko. St. Louis can't get a shot. Here's Natras. Shoots one, burning the save, McCowan cleared the rebound. Here's Wickenheiser. Shoots, he scores! Wickenheiser on the short side. Puts the Calgary lead to 4-2. To 
That goal came at six minutes into the period and had the crowd back in the game. But former Blues player Joe Mullen seemed to seal the fate of his former team 64 seconds later. Here's Bozik into Mullen. To Paplinski, tried to center. Goes to the other corner. Beers tied up. Calgary getting it loose. Centered Mullen. Shoots, he scores! Joey Mullen left alone in the slot. And Calgary gets back their three-goal margin again. That goal and what it could mean seemed to fire the Blues up even more, especially team captain Brian Sutter. Playing with a nagging shoulder injury, Sutter took to the ice like a man possessed. And over the years, little has stopped Sutter from doing what he puts his mind to doing. And at 8.08 of period number three, his determination paid off. And Reinhardt has it again for the Flames. To Patterson. He beats Paslowski and shot at the center. Natras flipping it into Gilmore. Now to Paslowski. Long shot. Rebound to Sutter. He scores! Narrows the gap to two goals again. At this point, we pick up the play-by-play -play of the game as it was heard on KXOK. On this night, KXOK's Dan Kelly was calling the action for the Canadian television's telecast of the game. So our broadcast includes comments by color commentator Ron Roosh, as well as myself and Joe Micheletti. Now let's all enjoy the action one more time. Still 11.22 to play. Calgary leading 5-3. to three. Shots on goal and that goal was scored 12-2 to two in favor of the Blues in this period. There's the rebound. And just an open net for Sutter to shoot into. The goal scorer, Sutter from Poslowski and Gilmore at 8.08. 11.22 left in regulation time. Don't go away. One more and we're in for a real fight. Recognizer on a faceoff. Quinn won the draw. And the Flames, Reinhardt trying to clear it out and does. Ramage hustling back to get it. They're going to rule St. Louis could have played it so there's no icing. Ramage feeding Beers. Beers into center ice to Bell. Bell to Wickenizer who tipped it in. Reinhardt back for the Flames. Reinhardt clearing one and McDonald just shot it to center. Bell for St. Louis to Ramage. St. Louis trailing five to three. Still over ten minutes to play. Here comes Bell moving in. Shot it to the corner. Beers in after it. Fanned on it. And McDonald then flips to center to Tonelli. One on one against Ramage. Tonelli shoots. He put it high off the glass. Now Risebrow back to Tonelli. Centered. Shot by McDonald just wide. This game wide open now. And Wickenizer cleared it for St. Louis. She he has it there. Shot it back in Bell for St. Louis. Dropping it to Ramage. Shot it back to center. Hustling after it. Pass Lusky. Into the corner, pass Lasky, Sutter, Sutter a shot. That went wide as Sutter was open in the slot. Held in by Natras to pass Lasky. He couldn't clear it in the flames, then get it to Sutter. Natras for St. Louis to Gilmore. Gilmore taken out by Sheehy. Gilmore battles, gets it again. His shot blocked. Into pass Lasky behind the net to Sutter. Sutter loses it and McCowan clears it for Calgary. Going back is Natras, and it's icing against the play. 9.39 remaining, and it's Calgary leading 5-3. to three. Right from the faceoff, Calgary able to clear the puck into center ice. Lee Norwood back for St. Louis to Ronning to Paderko. He missed it in McCowan for the play. Coming back in on right wing. Trying to center, Norwood cleared it. Broke it up in a quick shot by McCowan. Handled by Wamsley. St. Louis had only 12 shots in the first two periods. They've already had 12 here in the third. But cleared in by St. Louis. McKinnis firing it out to Mullen. Knocked away by Bell. Bell shot it back in and McKinnis going back nine minutes left. Calgary with a two goal lead. Flames clear it to center to John Tonelli. Here's Tonelli looking to center. Spots Mullen, just missed Mullen with the pass. And Federko right back the other way. Federko's shot deflected into the corner. 
Reinhardt is there for the Flames. Ed Manning it to Tinelli. Tinelli to center. Takes a hit, but flipped it to the St. Louis line, and Ramage gives it to Bell. Bruce Bell, pass to Raglan. Herb Raglan shooting it in. Cleared by Vernon, out onto the wing to Tinelli. Raglan bumped him, but it's cleared to Reinhardt, who got it to center to McDonald. Wickenheiser checked him and shoots it in. Vernon back to the net to clear it away. Intercepted by Bourgeois, trying to center. Avellini a shot blocked. And with one hand on the stick, Reithrow able to clear it. Eight minutes left. Wickenheiser for St. Louis to Bourgeois. Missed him. McCowan cleared it, and here come the Flames. Eaves to Patterson, back to Eaves, but Wickenheiser knocked it away. Wickenheiser, two pass, Lasky. Beats one man, moving in with Gilmore. And checked from behind by Lube was past Lasky. Now Ramage for St. Louis. Into center ice off Gilmore skate. McCowan feeding it to Eaves. Drop pass to Lou. Checked in front. Cleared into the corner by Bell. And St. Louis with Ramage to Sutter at center ice. Sutter into the flame zone to Gilmore, but Kaplinski back checking. Knocked it away. Ramage trying to feed it in. Get Sutter. Sutter moving in. And it's offside at the Calgary Blue Line. Only problem is nobody could hear the whistle. This is the Campbell Conference Championship live from St. Louis. 3.15 to play. Calgary came into the period leading 4-1. to one. St. Louis cut it to 4-2. to two, But then Mullen gave them a three-goal lead again. And St. Louis has just kept whittling away. And narrowed it to 5-4. to four. Stop one by St. Louis, pass Lasky. Goes in, shoots, Vernon a save. Juggled it and then was able to freeze it. And pass Lasky just about get it there. Oh, hold your ground. That's all that Vernon did there. He was in position. I don't think he saw this at all. There's traffic in front of him. He didn't see it. And Vernon just flat made a save by, because of his positioning. He did see the initial shot, but boy, I'll tell you, the youngster really picked up quickly when that puck was bouncing around in front. He had very good concentration on it. Now, one of the teams, I believe the Flames, have called their 32nd time out. 3.09 to play. This crowd is standing and cheering in St. Louis. This has been such a pattern, Bobby, in this Stanley Cup series. You just can't shake them. You can't bury them. They, outside of the second game of this series, when the Flames won rather lopsidedly, it has all been very close. You know, it's interesting. Reinhardt said they couldn't sit back. They had to keep after him. And when Dan and I were talking, I said they, they probably wouldn't do it, but they did. They went to a 1-4 defense, and that has hurt them. They just sent one four checker in and had those other four men struck out in the neutral zone. Now, you wonder why St. Louis, this is almost the same situation they do when they've been playing a man short, Calgary. And St. Louis hasn't been able to solve it. But now Calgary is really playing that 1-4, and it's allowed St. Louis to creep right back into this game. Look at the shot totals. That'll tell you why. 15-8 in this period, and the Blues have got the big advantage. 3 9 still to play. Gilmore, Sutter, and Paslowski. Face off. Joel Otto against Gilmore. Gilmore the drop. Paslowski a shot. Blocked, and as it hit Mullen, it bounced over the glass into the crowd again. Still another face-off coming up in the Calgary zone. This is the line, by the way, that has scored the Blues' last two goals. Gilmore, Sutter, and Pazlowski. Calgary with Otto, Bolzik, and Mullen. Face-off won by the Flames, and McKinnis feeds it to Joel Otto, and the Calgary Flames break three on two. Flipping it in, but Ramage is there to shoot it back up. Knocked away by McCowan to Bozik. Here's Bozik. Leaves for Mullen. Shooting. Wamsley a big save. Now McCowan at the point of drive. Wamsley stops that and was able to freeze it long enough for a stoppage. 2.42 to play. Face off coming up in the St. Louis zone. 
Well, Wamsley just made a tremendous save here. Bobby? Oh, Joey Mullen had a wrist shot to boot. He wasn't, you know, you're right at the top of the slot area right there, Ron. He has all four corners to go to. Has most angle, the best position on the ice to score, and he takes a wrist shot, which is the toughest shot to stop, and Wamsley beat him. Here's Eves against Federko. Eves getting the face off to Patterson. Behind the net to Eves. Eves taken out by Mahar. Now Lube for Calgary. Flipping it back of the net. And Eves couldn't get it. The Blues do. And here's Charlie Bourgeois. Flipping it into center ice. Calgary knocking it down. They get it to Patterson. Shot right back into the St. Louis zone. Wamsley sets it up for Federko. Federko to Bourgeois. 2-10 left, Bourgeois flipping it in, and offside, Mahar went in and scored, but the play was offside, as Mahar was the man who was offside at the Calgary Blue Line. Oh, you saw the fans stand for a moment there as that puck wound up in the net. Mahar obviously would not have had that net to shoot at, and Vernon not just stepped away. Well, look at that man. Well, he's got some things to say. Give them credit. They never quit for them. Ever. Boy, you really have to point your hat or tip your hat to Brian Sutter. Let me tell you, he's lifted this club right up from its skate straps and almost carried them here in the third period. He has kept them, and he's not allowing them to die easily. Scored the third goal and set up the fourth. St. Louis with Mahar, Federko, and Hunter on the ice. Calgary with Rise, Brown, McDonald, and Tonelli. St. Louis shoot it in. McKinnis shot it right back up. Ramage could have played it, so there's no icing. 155 left in regulation time. Calgary with a 5-4 lead. Shooting it off the boards, held in by Tonelli. Shooting one, he blasted that wide. Bounced right in front, comes to Bruce Bell. His pass to Hunter. Hunter to center, but Tonelli intercepts, and back comes Tonelli. Around Ramage. Tonelli still battling. Now Mahar intercepting. Getting it to Federko to Bruce Bell. Bell into center ice. And good checking there by Mullen. Mullen trying to center, but Ramage back. Flames get it anyway. Tonelli checked by Gilmore. 120 left. Gilmore to center ice. Firing it in. Digging in. Paslowski. Vernon cuts it off behind the net for McCowan. Paslowski scores. This is Ron Jacober. For those of us who... There were a lot of fans left this building when the score became 4-1 to one, back at the 1444 mark of the period. That's Paslowski's second goal in a row, his 10th of the playoffs, unassisted at 1852. He has just played the best 10 minutes of hockey, I guess, in his life. Mullen had his 10th, and now Paslowski his 10th. They lead the Stanley Cup goal scorers. St. Louis with about 12 minutes to go, trailed this game 5-2. to two. A 5-5 five, five tie. The Blues with 16 shots in this period. Here's Lee Norwood for St. Louis. Into the Calgary zone for Norwood. Shoots one burn and a save, and held on to it with Paslowski cruising in the slot again. And we're down to 58 seconds left. Well, Mike 
Vernon. There it is. A little room as it appeared that Reinhardt lost his balance momentarily. But now we're going to see what Vernon is like because he has been burnt a couple of times. He's made a couple of mistakes. He's been great through the playoffs. Now he's just got to regroup himself because, of course, the Blues still need one more. 5-5 five, five the score, 58 seconds left in regulation time. False alarm on the faceoff as Sutter jumped the gun. Greg Pazlowski from Kindersley, Saskatchewan has scored two in a row here to tie it. Now on the faceoff, the Flames are able to clear it, and they clear it all the way down the ice. Natras going back to touch it, icing against Calgary. Still 50 seconds left, and another faceoff in the Calgary end of the ring. Well, the picture shows it all. Well, the fans are rediscovering the blues. Gilmore wins the faceoff. Norwood shoots one, burning a save on that. And he held on to it. Well, I think it's safe to say if anybody has momentum now, it's St. Louis. You know, you, you can say dozens and dozens of times we can't sit back. We've got a 4-1 lead. We have to do what we did through the first two periods, carry it through to the 60th minute, and the Flames failed to do it. Flinsky and Gilmore. 46 seconds left in regulation time. Into the corner. Sheehy trying to clear it. Held in by Gilmore. Back of the net. And now Reinhardt for Calgary to rise, bro. Into center ice to Paplinski. Paplinski breaking in. Centered it. Gilmore there to clear it away. Paplinski again. Now Sheehy at the point. Shot blocked. Loose in front and shot wide by Patterson. Now Paslowski knocked Reisbrow down. And here's Gilmore. With 18 seconds left in regulation time to Paslowski. Paslowski centered. Gilmore was there, but Patterson broke it up. Cleared it away, and with eight seconds left, Lee Norwood, who has lost his helmet, is back to get it to Cavallini. Cavallini to Gilmore. Shoots it in. Vernon the save, and we will have overtime to the side, game six. An incredible comeback by the St. Louis Blues. Send this game into overtime. Let's take a look at the goal that tied this one up. As they like to say, the Saints are marching here in St. Louis. Here it is. As Gilmore made a good move at center ice and then cleared it around the board. Now, it seemed to scoot by Vernon. He went out the other side, and McCown trying to get out into an empty net. 5-5 five, five and sudden death overtime coming up. Well, not that it really needed it, but if this doesn't pump some life into this franchise, if this doesn't sell some season tickets, nothing will. Then Harry Arnett should leave. That's right. <laughs> if this he doesn't should do leave. It. If this doesn't do it. In all the, all the great sporting events I've ever seen, Ron, and you've seen a great deal, this is one of the greatest comebacks that I have ever seen in the history of any sport. Perhaps, in the, perhaps in recent years, maybe only to equal it would be Jack Clark's home run in Los Angeles last year. That was on the road, though, so the crowd wasn't what it is here. The crowd is ready, the Blues are ready, the Flames are ready, and here we go into sudden death overtime. The St. Louis score, they force the seventh game Wednesday in Calgary. Natras jumping it in. Flames back to get it, clear it to center. Here's Doug Reisbrow firing it in. Going back, Natras and Tonelli. Now pass Lusky, flipping it back to the net, and Norwood hustling over to get it for St. Louis. Knocks it back to the net again to Natras. Natras to Gilmore, flipping to pass Lusky. Pass Lusky firing it in. Vernon missed it back to the net. Here comes Sutter into Vortek, but it's shot quickly out by McDonald. And if Natras goes back, this is an icing call against Calgary in a faceoff coming up in the flame zone. We played 40 seconds of sudden death. They'll send Federko and Wickenheiser out there along with Hunter for a faceoff in the zone. Now again, we get the situation where we have two centermen out there. I believe Wickenheiser will take the draw, and if they get kicked out, you have the second centerman there to come in. A key faceoff, and they lose half Poplinski. Toronto with Poplinski out there as well. 
have a backup as well. Otto will take the face off, but Poplinski's there. If Otto should get thrown out. Otto against Wickenizer. St. Louis gets the face off, but Urko in front of the net. Couldn't get a shot off, and Otto feeds it to Mullen. Joe Mullen, number seven. Mullen into the blue zone. Moving in, fanned on his shot as Bell tied him up. Now Otto tried to center. Here's Mullen, loose at the side of the net, and Bell breaks out for St. Louis with Hunter, a two-on-two -two break. Bruce Bell stops, looks for a trailer for Durko. Backhander blocked at the defense. Here's Hunter. He's checked. Now Wickenizer trying to center. Got it in front in the flames. Shoot it into center ice. Back is Ramick. He hit the linesman with it. Flames dump it back in. Wamsley behind the net, leaving it for Ramick. Head manning to Bruce or to Mark Reeves. Reeves flips it in. Back in McKinnis to get it, shooting it back into the blue zone. Here's Eves racing in to get it. So Wamsley had to come out and clear it. Colin Patterson for Calgary. To McCowan, shot blocked and Reeves. Number 15 has it for St. Louis. He cleared it off the boards. It go go the length of the ice. McKinnis back to get it. And now Calgary will get a face off in the St. Louis zone. We played a minute 54 of sudden death overtime. Al McGinnis of the Calgary Flames. He has had a lot of shots in this series. We said he wasn't shooting the puck as much. I, I don't think he's winding up and taking those big blasts that we used to see him take, but he still has a dangerous shot. Now we'll get another key face off this time down in the St. Louis zone, and every one of them. The tendency in overtime, Bobby, is to either a quick goal or it tends to settle in. You're right. You, every, both teams like to score and get it over with early, but it seems after about four or five minutes in the overtime, if nobody scored, then you get back to your regular grind that you've seen throughout the game. They saw up one by St. Louis and Norwood feeding it out to Mahar, and Mahar clearing it. And he cleared it up over the glass, and St. Louis will have to face another faceoff deep in their own zone. Makar, Mahar was trying to shoot it high off the glass, but got it up too high and put it into the crowd. Uh, Rick Mahar had the game of his life a couple of games ago in this series with two goals. Now this one, the Blues trying to send this back for a seventh and deciding game in Calgary. Gilmore against Quinn. Face off, won by Calgary. Reinhardt, shot blocked and... Breaking out is Mahar. Tried to get it to Gilmore. Now Sutter in across the line. Feeds Gilmore. He couldn't get it. Here's Mahar. Centering one. Off a skate in the flames. Come back. Tanelli into center ice to Quinn. Dan Quinn with a shot up high. And into the crowd. And the faceoff will be about 10 feet inside the St. Louis blue line. One of the heroes of this game, Dan Quinn, who way back when scored a couple of power play goals and then assisted on another. And his assist on Tonelli's goal made the score 4-1 to one at the 1444 mark of the second period. Calgary winning a faceoff. McKinnis a drive. Wamsley got a piece of that. Big rebound poked away by St. Louis. Held in by McCowan. Otto to Mullen. Mullen with a shot. Blocked by Ramage. And St. Louis cleared out. Here's Federko with Hunter. Federko taken out of the play. Wickenizer trailing. Shoot, Vernon. Bad save on Wickenizer. That's the best chance either team has had. Back is Bozik. Long shot. Wamsley a stick save. Mullen holding it in. Back to the net. And Ramage took the Calgary player auto out of the play. And back comes Bruce Bell. Bell shooting it in. Bell charging in after it. Loose in front, just cleared away at the last second by Otto. And Calgary break back, but Natris is there to knock it away. And then the puck is cleared up over the boards. Here the Calgary bench faceoff will be in the center ice area, 16-49, left in the first overtime. Well, overtime in the playoffs this year, there have been nine played so far. The home team winning five and the visitors four. Claude Lemieux of the Canadians, the only player to have knocked two overtime goals this year. The other overtime winners, Glenn Anderson, Bob Brook, and Brian McClellan of the Rangers. I'll give you the rest of them in a moment. 
Now St. Louis clear it down the ice and will be called for icing and will have to face another faceoff deep in their own zone. Well, the, the one that was scored by the Blues, of course, in their overtime victory, Mark Reed, that was against Minnesota, Dan, or rather in the uh, game against the uh, fifth game of the final against Toronto, the Norris final. Well, with Kevin Denine and Sylvan Turgeon scored overtime goals this year, Lanny McDonald for Calgary as well. Longest overtime so far was that Canadians Rangers game three went to 9 41. Sheehy with a shot wide of the net. Now Reinhardt trying to hold it in, did get it behind the net, centered. Norwood cleared it away. And here's Reed for St. Louis. Reed puts it to center. He's checked. Now Mahar trying to break up. Here's Gilmore getting it in across the line, broken up, and Sheehy comes back for Calgary. Gilmore knocked him down. Now Patterson for the plane. Long shot, Wamsley the save, and Norwood has it for St. Louis. Lee Norwood into center ice to Mahar. Rick Mahar carried in. He's checked. Back comes Reisbrow. Overskates the puck. Now gets it. Shot it to the St. Louis line. And it's Norwood into center ice to pass Woski to Wickenizer. Backhander burn and a pad save. Reinhardt there for the rebound. Wearing to Reisbrow. Now to Tonelli. Shoots it in. Wamsley leaving it there. Ramage back for St. Louis. Flipped it on the board. Reisbrow held it in, but Ramage breaks it out, and here's Wickenizer with pass Woski, a two-on-two -two break. Wickenizer, two pass Woski. He's taken out, and Tonelli feeds Reisbrow. Back to Tonelli. Leaving it for McCowan. He fired it in behind the net. Sutter digging in to work it free. Gets it to Ramage, and Ramage to pass Woski. Ahead to Wickenizer. Three on, three break for St. Louis. Just dumped in by Wickenizer, and then he heads to the bench for a line change. Flames, long outlet pass to Tonelli. He just shot it in and then took a hit from Natras. And Norwood is back for St. Louis. Norwood to Hunter off his skate. Norwood, or at least Hunter back to get it. Trying to clear it. Bolzek held it in. Centered. That's knocked down and cleared by Norwood. And the plane, she he has to go back. She he into center ice. Natras knocking it down to Hunter. Hunter hit the linesman as he tried to clear it in. Back is Paplinski to Mullen. Passed out of his reach. Wamsley leaving it for Norwood. Now to Hunter. Into the corner to Mullen. Mullen shooting. Wamsley a big save on Mullen. That's the best chance of either team. Here comes Hunter on right way. Jack the Flames come right back. Paplinski. And he's not flying by Natras. Norwood for St. Louis. Being forechecked by Patterson. And Norwood fell and fell on top of the puck. They played five minutes, 47 seconds of overtime. And Mullen was just robbed by Rick Wamsley. Here it comes. Boy, Mullen has been really great the last period and a little bit. And Wamsley cutting down the angle there, Bobby. He got a little bit lucky because he had committed himself early. He had got, he's already on his way down, and he was leaning towards the center of the ice, expecting that pass. But Mullen took that quick shot, and lucky it was low. Calgary in overtime have outshot St. Louis 3-2. to two. Face off, won by Eves, but St. Louis is Bruce Bell controlling. Bell off the boards, held in by Calgary. Eves knocking it into the corner, Ramage back to get it. On right wing to Reeves. Reeves to center to Gilmore. Gilmore with Mahar, leaves it for Mahar. Mahar checked as he tried to move in and... It's shot into center ice by Calgary. Gilmore to Reed. Reed's firing it in. Knocked down there, and here's McKinnis. Flipping it into the blue zone. Bell back to get it. Fired it back, and then here's Bozik in to steal it. Centered, but Cavallini intercepts. Here's Gino Cavallini for St. Louis. Flips it into the Calgary zone. Sheehy back for the Flames. Cleared it to center. Warswaw going back to get it. And he fired it into center ice. Now Mullen for Calgary. Checked by Paslowski. Here's Paslowski scooping it in for the Blues. Sheehy back to get it. Cleared it behind the net to Quinn. Quinn firing it up. And Calgary break out a two-on-two -two break. It's Joe Mullen. Moves in, shoots off the crossbar. Mullen hit the crossbar. Now Wansley a save on McCowan. St. Louis trying to get it out of there. Sutter it back and Gilmore chips it to center. Here's Paslowski with only McCowan back. 
shoots one and Vernon a glove save and he held on to it oh a little help for Mr. Iron again Bobby what a shot Mullen let go and he's letting a few go here it comes Boy, Joey Mullen has really been the man for Calgary, even in that third period. He got the fifth goal, and in this overtime, he's had a number of big chances on Walmsley, and he hit the goal post. Walmsley's made a number or a couple of big saves on him, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's when your heart is really in your throat then. That one was a deflected shot, by the way, and it just came up on Walmsley. That close to ending it and sending Calgary to the Stanley Cup final. Calgary in overtime this year, one and one. St. Louis, one and zero. Flames from the faceoff with McDonald. Firing a long one, Wamsley to his knees. Sets it up for Ramage. Ramage into center ice to Pedrico. Pedrico stole it from Reinhardt. Breaking in to Hunter. Hunter shooting, rebound. So that's it. St. Louis's Monday Night Miracle. Some say the greatest comeback in Stanley Cup history. Whatever it is to you, we're glad that we could bring it to you, both on KXOK Radio that night and now on this keepsake recording. Even though the Blues went on to lose to Calgary in Game 7, Game 6 will live in the minds of Blues fans and hockey fans all over North America for years to come. The Monday Night Miracle a special presentation of KXOK Sports has been written and produced by Tom Calhoun. Special thanks to engineers Tom Ennis and Jim Jackson and KXOK's Vice President for Play-by-Play -play Operations, Dan Kelly. I'm KXOK Sports Director, Ron Jacober.